welcome to another exciting edition of Hidden in the Universal Vault. I'm Ron, your host. Go ahead and do that. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I'm Ron, your host, as always. Now, you know, this was tough to say which movie I was going to cover. But I thought I'd go ahead and cover another short film. And I said this again many times. I don't even know why I'm continuing this series. After watching the last Land for Time movie, the recent one, I thought I'd go ahead and take a look at a Land for Time movie, this time released in 2001. I, yeah, 2001. I think it's the, uh, yeah, the eighth installment series. I had to count for a second. And this is the eighth installment released in 2001, Land Before Time 8, The Big Freeze. Now, this I'm watching, just like I watched The Great Long Neck Migration last year, I'm also watching this off of the three movie Family Fun Pack, and that's the set I watch. Now, now the movie did glitch on one scene, so I tried rewinding back and it kept glitching. Thankfully, it didn't freeze the disc, so I was still able to finish the movie. Only one scene glitch. Basically, before I go on the review, if the movie glitches three times, that's it. It's like three strikes and you're out. If it glitches one scene, I'll continue watching the movie. If it glitches second time, we'll see. Third time, pop the disc out, I'm done. Now that I got it out of the way, what did I think of the big freeze? Um, this is really hard because I gotta be honest, this was a pretty darn good movie. This was really hard because, as I said before, these Land for Time movies are more the same. But sometimes you'll come across hidden gems like The Great Long Neck Migration. But the one I watched was The Big Freeze right here, so I just wanted to let you know about that. So, let's talk about The Big Freeze. So basically, Little Footman and his friends, uh, basically, let me go ahead and get onto the wiki page and get to Big Freeze so I can read about it. Because the back of the DVD doesn't say anything. So, right here. Basically, I'm going to kind of read off what the wiki page says a little bit. So, basically the movie centers around, this movie is mostly a Spike-centric story. And this time we have Spike who decides he, he meets a, he meets up with a herd, well he meets up uh, with species of his kind. So basically they decided that Spike needs to move on and hang out with the other man. So, Basically, Ducky and Spike don't get along with each other in this one. Like every Land for Time movie, they, the characters never get along. But basically right there, basically they don't get along. So Sarah's teaching Ducky how to be more aggressive, but more or less get mad. But that's really what it is. Then the kids, the dinosaurs decide to meet up with another... They go to class of, of another tree horn named Mr. Thicknose. Voice none other than Mufasa himself, Robert, is it Gip, Galimo? Probably, uh, Gip, 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 I'm just, I'm probably butchering the last name, but he is Mufasa and he was known for portraying Benson on the sitcom Soap and the spin-off series as a character. But, yeah, he was Mufasa in The Lion King. So, Essentially, his character is just essentially, I hate to say it, but I don't want to compare him to the Disney classic. Well, yeah, I don't want to compare it to that. But he's essentially it. Mufasa stepped into the Land for Time universe. So that's his character. But Mr. Treehorn uh, is not pleased with him. So basically, Littlefoot goes and basically now, like I said, Spikey meets up with another Another kind. Spikey also meets up with a character named Tip Tippy. Yeah, Tippy, who's actually voiced by uh, he was voiced by Jeremy Cicero. Uh, he's he was famous for the two Brother Bear movies, and he was in the sitcom The Burning Back Show. But he was also recently in the Angry View Game Nerd the movie, which is interesting. So he plays another uh, another kind. Sorry about the loud fan, guys. I, I do apologize. If there's a loud fan running, I, I do apologize. Sorry about that, guys. But, so we get that. So, they basically go their separate ways, and basically now, Littlefoot discovers that there's the, I think it's Frost Star. Basically, it's just snow. They don't say it's snow in this, 
but it's snow. So essentially they turn the Great Valley into the Himalayans, essentially. So we get that. Sorry about that, guys. But, so we get that. So we basically get that. So they're on this journey. Mr. Treehorn blames Mr. Thicknose. Such a weird name for a character. Yeah, Mr. Thicknose. Just such a random name. It's not as bad as Woeful and Doleful in that god-awful way for time movie. It's not as bad as that, but just come on. The writers seem like they have weird, weird names for these characters. So they're on this big journey, and they, they go on this big journey. It's more the same, so I'm just going to probably just leave it at that. Um, so after I talked about what did I think of this installment, Pretty good. Like I said, this is actually really, really good. It was kind of hard for me to say if this was going to be like the other ones, but it, it, it's it's fun. It, it's fine. It, it's a solid sequel. Not as good as Great Long Neck Migration, but it's a dead second. I would say this is probably the this is probably the other one I would go back to if I'm watching these sequels. So big, yeah. So that's that. So. Basically, like I said, they go on this adventure, and it's actually not terrible. And I'm trying to think of anything else. So, they go on this adventure with him, and they head inside the cave, and they realize there's this warm water. And the warm water actually gets them warm, and the, uh, the, the dinosaurs and the, and the other dinosaurs, they come there. So, it's this big, big adventure. The songs aren't great. In fact, I could easily tell you the Mad Song is the worst song in this movie. But Family was good, Lesson wasn't good. So I will easily say there was one good song in it, and that was Family. Because it really tells you the characters. It, it tells you how Spike was part of the family. And Ducky gets very depressed that Spike is not there with her on these adventures. But they realize he's not part of our breed. He, he's not part of our group. So you do really feel bad. It's sad at times, but it almost feels like the first movie, but not that sad. So that's really that. So that's really much, I it, I don't know how to explain it. This is just a pretty dang good movie. It's actually, like I said, one of the better ones. I think I think the performances are good. Littlefoot is played by Thomas Decker, like I said, he's in this. Uh, Jet Bennett uh, voices, um, voices Petrie, and we get a Andrew McFadden. Is it, yeah, not McFadden, Mc McFadden, uh, the actress from Hey Arnold, w Rhonda, uh, Rhonda from Hey Arnold, plays Sarah. So, like I said, it's good. I'm going to kind of mention, like, this is near the end of the movie, but I will say this, the, the negative in that movie, and this is the big con, why does every Land for Time movie have a big chase scene with the, with the shark tooth? They're not even designed. The original Land for Time shark tooth were very creepy. Here they just look like a joke. I don't like the design of the shark tooths. I like the idea that this one is set during the winter time. That's really what makes this strong. It, it's it's different for what it is, and yeah. So I'm gonna kind of talk about how that ends. So if you don't want to hear spoilers, please stop. So they show all the dinosaurs and the the dinosaurs and the dinosaurs' parents. They all find where it's warm, including like Mr. Treehorn, Mr. Thicknose. Well, Mr. Thicknose wasn't them. Though Spike comes back, he gets warm, but he slides. But they were in shallow, and then Littlefoot's like, I knew it was deep. So basically, he falls right in the water and realizes that's actually deep. It wasn't shallow. So. Dr. Dawn just takes a dive right there and like, whoa! Like that. That's crazy. Yeah. That's that's pretty much that's the movie. So I'm not gonna give you how that is, but I kind of didn't really want to spoil it, but I'm sure you probably all have seen these movies. So there's not much I could say about these movies. And well not these movies, Big Freeze is what I watch. 
I am going to watch the last of these because I have one more that I own. There's actually two more, which means I have three more to watch, but the other two I have, I don't own right now. So the last one I do plan on getting to eventually will be Journey, uh, Journey to Big Water. I will get to that one eventually, trust me. I might, that might be, that might be the next video or next week. I'm not going to tell you guys who just have to tune into the channel. But I really want to watch Big Freeze because I was in, I was interested in this. For a Land of Time movie, this one's pretty solid. A solid sequel that I can easily recommend to anybody. Not a highly recommend, but I recommend it. I can recommend the movie. We'll just say it. So, this is tough. So, this was tough rating the, rating the movie. I didn't know what I was going to rate the movie, but it was tough. I had to go back and forth on this while I was watching the movie. I heard the Mad song, which is the opening song. Oh gosh, this is probably going to be bad. But later on in the film, I was very enjoying it, so it bumped it up higher despite, despite a couple songs in the movie. But the writing was good, set in it, oh, and set, set in the wintertime. Oh, I forgot to mention. The movie actually was directed by Charles Goro Gor Gor Vader. Gorov Nader. Uh, I'm probably getting that last name wrong. He he was he was the same guy who directed Once Upon a Forest, the the theatrical film. Yeah, he actually worked for Hanna Barbera at the time. He actually he actually directed Once Upon a Forest. So I wanted to kind of mention that so I don't forget. So yeah, that's all I have to say about The Big Freeze. I'm going to give this movie, and this is going to shock you a lot, a 4 out of 5. This is was tough to say whether I give it that or something else. It was hard to say. It was going to be a 3 out of 5, but I thought a 4 out of 5 seemed fine. I, again, it's one of the better of the sequels that I would easily say, check this movie out. I, if you only had to watch this, if you only had to watch two, Great Long Night Migration will stand as the best. But this comes in a dead second, so I would say check this one out too if you didn't didn't get around. If you didn't get around to it. But yeah. So that's my review of Land Before Time 8, The Big Freeze. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you do like the content of the channel, I have a ton of videos up there. Like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell. Click the notification button. Check me on Letterbox. I'm, I'm on Letterbox. So if you want to see all the movies that I that I have rated, you can do that. You can check out the Letterbox page if you want to. But yeah, like I said, let me know what you guys think of the Big Freeze. Did you did any of you guys like it? So yeah, go check out the Big Freeze. Uh, it's definitely something I would say is definitely worth watching. So yeah. And as always, keep watching those Universal movies, and I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.